Hey everyone, Clayton Miller here with Makeover Homes, bringing you another awesome Makeover University course for you, the preferred client. In this course, we're gonna talk about how to work with the contractor. But we're gonna talk about not only how to work with them, but how to find one, what kind of contractor you're looking for, and then once the project gets started, what are the different things, the different nuances that you need to know about before you get started? So if you've made it this far, You've probably figured out, and I've said it a few times, that the contractor is arguably the most important player on your team. The contractor is going to spend the most time on site, the most time communicating back and forth with you, and is ultimately gonna be responsible for what your finished project looks like. So understanding that the contractor plays a very important role is super important. In today's course, we're gonna go over a couple different things. We're gonna talk about how to find a contractor and you know, get your bid. We're gonna talk about when to involve the contractor. You don't necessarily need them at the beginning, the middle and the end, and there's a couple different ways to figure that out. We're gonna talk about how to work within your budget so that we're not coming up with bids that are either way too big or way too small. We're gonna talk about reserves and change orders. And finally, finish it with how draws work and how your contractor gets paid. So just to reiterate again, your contractor is a very, very important player on your team. So you wanna make sure that you pay attention when searching for that contractor, um, but also know the kinds of things that you're gonna run into um, when working with them on your project. All right, first things first, knowing when to get the contractor involved. So depending on the kind of loan you're using, depending on whether you're doing a purchase or a rental refi, and depending on the cost of your project and what actually is going on, are all going to dictate whether or not the contractor gets involved at different stages. So I don't wanna go through this entire graph because once I walk through two of them, you'll probably understand it. But this is kind of a, a, a grid, if you will, on when the contractor needs to get involved. Now the contractor needs to get involved once you know the most amount of information has been able to be gathered before that contractor walks through the project. So let's start with the first one. Let's start with the FHA 203K, and then you break it down by the type of project. So you've either got a new purchase or a rental refi. Those are the only two options. Are you purchasing a new house, or do you currently live in your home and you're gonna be doing a, a refinance, a rental refinance on that home? And that we're gonna cover in a later module. The next question is the cost of the project. So on the FHA world, the cost of the project plays a very, very big role. And on the conventional side, the cost of the project isn't quite as important, but is dependent on the type of lender, or rather the lender that you're using. They all handle the conventional uh, home style loan a little different. So if we are doing an FHA 203K and we're purchasing a new house, which is probably the most common job we run into, and you're going to be spending at least $35,000 or more, again, the most common project we run into, then the, con the contractor is gonna need to show up after meeting with the HUD consultant. So you found the house and you got it under contract, you already met with the home inspector, you've now met with the HUD consultant, now the contractor comes into the game. So by the time the contractor gets there, you've already had the home inspected, so you know what kind of shape it's in, does the crawl space need work? Does the roof need work? The attic need work? All of those places that the contractor doesn't necessarily know to go to uh, unless a home inspector already you know, discovered the problem. And then he also goes after the HUD consultant because the HUD consultant's job is to put together the list, the FHA minimums list and the scope of work. So if you have the contractor show up after these two people, the home inspector and the HUD consultant, now that contractor has a full list, he knows all the problems, he knows all the minimums he has to do, and then he can add your wants and wishes on top of that. So if you get the contractor out there in a different order, then you don't necessarily have all the information you need yet to put together that scope of work. So you can just walk through this little grid we put together, FHA 203K, new purchase, if the price is under $30,000, then there won't necessarily be a HUD consultant. In this case, the contractor will come right after the home inspection. That way we know all the issues with the house, 
and the contractor can make sure that those are on the bid. Um, so just to do one more on the flip side, if we're doing a conventional home style loan and we're going to be doing a, a reno refi and we're going to be spending less than 30 grand. So this will happen on occasion. Then the contractor is going to show up after the pre-approval with the lender. So there's not going to be a home inspection because the, you already live in the house. So you pretty much know what kind of shape it's in. No HUD consultant is going to be needed to put a scope of work together or any kind of FHA minimums because the cost of the project is so low. So just throw the contractor right in there. They're ready to go. They'll put their bid together and send it to the lender. So you can use this to break down what type of project you're working on and when you need to get that contractor involved. Getting them involved too early means there's a chance that they are going to have to come back again a second time or third time, which just extends the full length of this project. So if we can do it all in the right steps, everybody's got all the information at the right times, at the right time, and it's going to be faster and simpler for everybody.